Welcome to this video tutorial on myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis literally means grave muscle weakness. Effective muscle contraction is dependent on adequate amounts of the neuromuscular transmitter acetylcholine binding to acetylcholine receptors to initiate a muscle contraction. Myasthenia gravis, or MG, is a chronic disease that results from an autoimmune response that destroys acetylcholine receptors at the neuromuscular junction. Muscle weakness occurs when acetylcholine cannot activate enough receptor sites at the neuromuscular junction. The onset of myasthenia gravis is usually gradual and the course of the disease highly variable. It can occur at any age, but usually affects women at 20 to 30 and men at 60 to 70 years of age. Signs and symptoms of myasthenia gravis involve weakness and fatigue of selected voluntary muscles. The hallmark signs are diplopia, or double vision, and ptosis, or drooping eyelid, slurred speech, difficulty chewing and swallowing, weakness in arms and legs, chronic muscle fatigue, and difficulty breathing. Early on in the disease, symptoms are relieved easily with rest, but as the disease progresses, fatigue becomes evident with less and less exertion. There are several ways to diagnose myasthenia gravis. The Tensilon test uses Idrophonium, a short-acting anticholinesterase, which is given IV. The patient with MG experiences a significant but brief increase in muscle strength in previously weakened muscles, and this response is a positive result. A blood test can be done, and acetylcholine receptor antibody titers will be elevated. A blood test can be done, and acetylcholine receptor antibody titers will be elevated. An electromyogram, or EMG, detects delay or failure in muscle fibers that are repetitively stimulated. And a thoracic MRI shows the thymus gland enlarged or abnormal. Indirect acting cholinergics or anticholinesterase agents improve neuromuscular transmission and increase muscle strength. These include neostigmine or prostigmine and pyridostigmine. Also, immunosuppressive drugs improve muscle strength by suppressing the production of abnormal antibodies, but they may cause major side effects. Examples include prednisone, azathioprine, or imuran, cyclosporin, and tacrolimus. Another treatment is plasmapheresis, in which the patient's plasma is removed and replaced with albumin or fresh frozen plasma, and the acetylcholine receptor antibodies are removed in the process. Improvements are usually dramatic, but temporary. Another treatment is thymectomy, which is surgical removal of the thymus gland, which results in symptom remission in about 40% of patients, possibly due to the rebalancing of the immune system. Patients with MG are susceptible to two crisis situations that are both characterized by respiratory difficulty or failure. Myasthenic crisis is an acute exacerbation of the disease process and may occur in response to stress, trauma, or infection. The muscles that control breathing and swallowing can weaken to the point of life-threatening levels and assisted ventilation is usually required. When this happens, additional anticholinesterase medications are given. A cholinergic crisis occurs when cholinergic drugs have reached a toxic level and cause overstimulation of the PSNS. Anticholinesterase drugs are stopped and atropine, an anticholinergic drug, is given. The patient has profound weakness, copious respiratory secretions, and respiratory failure, which may require intubation and ventilation. So, is it a myasthenic or cholinergic crisis? If signs and symptoms begin about one hour after an anticholinesterase drug was given, it is most likely a cholinergic crisis, or too much drug. If signs and symptoms begin three or more hours after medication is given, it is more likely to be a myasthenic crisis, too little drug. A Tensilon test can be done if unable to differentiate between the two conditions. Educating the patient and family about self-care is foundational in the management of myasthenia gravis. The patient must wear a medical alert ID at all times. The patient needs to balance rest and activity throughout the day. Do not overexert and they need to plan for extra periods of rest. They need to modify their diet as needed in response to swallowing problems. Usually a soft diet is okay and they need to eat slowly, taking small bites. 
The patient needs to be aware of disease response to stress, infection, temperature extremes, and hormonal swings. They should avoid stress and extreme heat. The patient needs to wear practical shoes for easier walking and maintaining balance. They should take all anticholinesterase drugs with food or milk to prevent stomach upset. And the patient needs to inform their doctor of any other medications being taken, prescription, over-the-counter, or herbs, as many of these can compromise neuromuscular transmission and will worsen disease symptoms. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on myasthenia gravis, and be sure to subscribe and check out our Facebook page.